So I arrived to the station a little bit early and it's time to have breakfast and thankfully there is a storyway that's open at this hour. So this thing, I think a lot of people call it a triangular kimbap, is something that has been here with me in different stages of life and in different places. I had this as food in the mountains, I had this at home, I had this on the road trips or basically almost everywhere. As much as I don't think this is the best food option, this is the most available and kind of not that bad health-wise. So there are three types of passenger trains here in South Korea. The first one that you see here is KTX. This is the fastest and most expensive one. This is a train that goes over 300 km per hour and can go from Seoul to Busan in about two and a half hours. The second one that you see here is Mukunwa. It doesn't go fast at all, but it is the most affordable option if you have time to spare. The third is ITX. The train is beautiful and modern, and this is what I will be taking to Beijing today. Alright, I just arrived to Beijing, and this is very important city food to me because this is a place where I spent about five years of my life here studying. So yeah, another stop by Storyway to get the power it because just like coffee it makes a great drink for road trips. I still have friends here in Daejeon and it's always nice to come to the city and uh, experience what life was like before at school and relieve the memories and, and just I guess catch a little bit of nostalgia about good old times. After about 150 kilometers or so of driving, we are at this Hugo Sol uh, rest stop, and it is huge. There is nothing around it, but the rest stop itself is huge. We have a lot of convenience stores, lots of food options and even stuff for hiking, as you can see here. I love the rest stops here in South Korea. Most of them are absolutely beautiful. All right, this rest area is actually one of the biggest ones I've come across. It is amazing how many things you can buy here. Of course, there's a convenience store, but most of them have convenience stores and coffee shops. But this one also has retail stores where you can buy like outfits and stuff. And this one has a lot of food options as well. So over here behind me is the kiosk where you buy the food. And right behind me here are the four or five different options of food where you actually pick it up. So you order it from one place and you pick it up in four or five different places depending on what you order because all of them are different cuisines. But mainly over here is Korean food. Okay, despite all the food options, uh, we brought the Seoul food here. This is one of the favorite dishes that I've ever tried in Seoul and I was there yesterday so I decided to make the most out of it and get more for today. This is Turkish rice plate with chicken and uh, I think sour cream sauce and vegetables inside. Alright, so we are now in Busan right by the sea, it's right on the left. There is a metro station nearby and the first thing to do here is to find a place and get the board, the surfboard. Also it's currently 36 degrees, it's very hot. It was a really very nice three-hour drive, uh, not a lot of cars despite the fact that it's weekend here. Да, вон там вот слева первых, это что ли легко или хорошо лежит? Вот так? Да. So the place I'm renting the surfboard is called Surfholic and over there the office we made the payment reservation and over here we pick up the board. 
Да? This will be my board. The moment I've been waiting for, and the moment I wanted to show you the most, is the sea itself. So according to the forecast, it's gonna be around one meter, a little bit less than a meter of waves, which is kind of perfect for somebody like me who is still learning. It's been like my third year of learning. I'm very slow learning when it comes to this, and I also don't go surfing that often. So. We'll see, let's set up, I'll show you around a little bit and then let's see what the surfing is going to be like here. And also now that we are here by the sea, a couple of useful apps that you can use to see the waves without like really traveling to the location itself. So the first app is Surfline. The app is in English and you can see on the map your favorite or available spots for surfing, yeah, even in South Korea. I think it's available worldwide as well. Uh, the only thing about Surfline is that not all the spots are available there. And all of the spots will be available in another app. I will show you a little bit later. So when it comes to Surfline, you can actually pin your own uh, favorite spots and you can see how big the waves are. And you can also see the forecast for the waves. That means maybe like a night or two nights before, you can kind of plan the trip, see the spots around you and find the best location that serves your needs, I guess, and purpose for surfing. And the second website slash app that I wanted to recommend you is wsbfarm.com. This is the Korean website and they have an app as well uh, where you can see all the spots that are available in Korea. You can click on the city, choose whether it's going to be Yanyan, Busan, Jeju or other spots. You can click on the app itself and see the same thing, like the forecast, how big the waves are, the wind direction and stuff like this. But the killer feature of this app, except for the fact that it has all the spots, is that you can actually see live cameras, webcams, through your phone or a laptop. The webcams are available for every big spot location. Some of them work sometimes, some of them don't. So you have to keep that in mind. But even for the Tadepo beach where we are at right now, you can actually see the live view of what the beach and waves look like. And this is a killer feature. And I think two of these apps will help you greatly to save time and predict the waves before you head somewhere. So in Korea, you have to be very, very uh, smart when come to choosing a location just because a lot of the locations most of the times won't have waves and Korea is actually re pretty good for beginners I guess you won't really find anything super cool except for I guess Jeju because there is a beach that sometimes has some pretty cool waves but yeah I recommend to try the steps plan the trip ahead and try to avoid the touristic spots like Surfy Beach in Yanyan just because it's too touristy there are too many people not a lot of waves and try experiment, see where the locals go. And just like that, after just five minutes, 46 seconds, I have the suit on. I'm gonna try to practice a little bit and then show you more what it feels like actually to be there. Because we are planning to attach a camera to the surfboard for the first time. Hopefully it's not gonna be the last time as well.
All right, so we are currently looking for a place to camp because we have a tent and a car and then are gonna spend the night outdoors for the first time, at least me, ever. And these are the views that we are encountering while looking for a place to camp. Good morning, it's the second day here in Busan and this is the spot we stayed in. Uh, the tent was pretty special and I think two to three people can fit easily. And the coolest thing is that when you walk a little bit closer to the sea, this is the view. Alright, so I totally look like shit. I'm really tired. I slept for just a little bit. It was a pretty good sleep closer to the morning, but falling asleep was pretty pretty hot and yeah we are supposed to go swim again uh, and surf again I'll see if I have power to do so but it's day two here in Busan so it's just a little bit over 6 a.m. here uh, but the parking lot nearby is full and I think a lot of people are either sleeping uh, at night here to get the most of the surfing in the morning because that's when you have less people and sometimes the waves are better but not today Okay, so how it works here when you rent the board is right at the office you get only the leash because there is a tent, a surfholic tent right at the beach and you just take the board whenever you, like after you reserved it and then you return it. And once again these are the spots where you get the board, there are different I guess ones around and you can choose and as long as you return it after 4 hours you're good. The second day overall wasn't as good as the first day. These are a lot of my mistakes here. Uh, I barely had any successful runs, but I guess you can analyze what I did wrong and I can analyze what I did wrong to do better next time. This is how surfing should look like with the waves that we had on Sunday morning. Alright, so this has been an absolutely beautiful adventure and it's coming to the end. It's about 10 a.m. in the morning, time to go back to Daejeon and get a KTX back to Seoul. This has been almost, almost a day of surfing here in Busan. I hope you learned something new, I was able to share the experiences and how you can do something like this as well. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.